Now, of course, to generate our bricks, we're going to need a brick image. And I've gone ahead and taken the brick set just here from opengameart.org. I'll leave a link to this in the course link so you can go ahead and grab it. Uh, but I'll also leave the cut up version of these. We're not going to be using a sprite for this, although that would be better. We're just going to take each individual tiny image and go ahead and replicate it. Uh, later on, if you want to create a sprite, you can do. It just means we're not loading in three different images because, of course, we have the paddle the brick and the ball. Okay, so let's go ahead and just copy this over first of all. So over in the root directory, over in assets, over in images, we're gonna go ahead and copy this brick image over. So that's all there and ready to go. Now the first step that we need to take is to go ahead and load this in. So if we just come over to boot.js, notice that down here, we're loading in some assets like the loader background and the loader bar. What we now need to do is do pretty much the same thing. So let's go ahead and say this load image. And we basically give a unique reference to this and then we give the path. So we know that this is gonna be in assets, images, and this is gonna be brick.png. So now that we've loaded that brick in, we can use this brick wherever we want inside of our world. Okay, so now that we've done this, what we're gonna do is outside of the states directory and directly within source, I'm gonna create a prefabs directory. These are prefabricated elements that we can use and reuse, and we can create our own logic inside of these. Now for a brick, this is gonna be pretty straightforward, but let's take a look at how this works, and then I'll explain further uh, why we're doing this once we get into it. So I'm gonna create a brick.js file inside of here at the top i'm going to go ahead and import phaser from phaser and we're going to go ahead and create a brick class in here and this is going to extend phaser dot sprite so let's go ahead and add that in now this is going to have a constructor inside of here which is going to go ahead and set everything up we'll get a reference inside of this constructor to the game and the x and y position that we're actually placing this object which is really important now we're going to call the parent constructor passing in the game the X and the Y, and we're gonna go ahead and pass in brick. All this means is that wherever we want to use this brick, we can pass in where we want it to be on the X and Y axis, and that's gonna go ahead and place it in the correct position for us. Now, also inside of the constructor, we want to go ahead and set the physics for this particular item. We know that this uh, will react to things touching it, like the ball, so we're gonna go ahead and say this game, physics, arcade, and we're gonna enable the body on this and pass in a reference to the current thing, which of course is the brick. So we're kind of doing this, we could do this outside of here, but I find it quite helpful to do everything inside of here. So we're just saying enable physics for this particular item. Now, the other thing that we want to do really importantly is set the immovable property on here to true, because of course a brick can't move, it can be destroyed, uh, a ball can move or a paddle can move, but this should never move. Now, finally, we're going to go ahead and export this brick, and that is pretty much it. We can import this where we need it. We can go ahead and place it in the correct position. We know that we've enabled physics on this, and we have set it to immovable. Okay, so now what we need to do is, over in our actual game, set up our bricks. So once again, what I'm going to do is inside of the create method, which is going to be called when this screen is kind of rendered, we're going to go ahead and say create bricks, and of course, extract that out to a create bricks method in here just to keep things nice and tidy. Now let's actually call this set up bricks. That makes a little bit more sense just to keep in consistency with what we've done here. And the first thing that we're gonna do is assign a property to this class called bricks. And we're gonna say this game add group. Now what that's gonna do is create a group of a specific item for us, which we can collect together and apply uh, maybe an event handler on all of them items. So for a brick, of course, we're gonna have lots of bricks which all need to do something when a ball hits it. So that's why we add a group. So we can apply that event to all of the things inside of here. So what we're now gonna do is call a generate bricks method, again, to keep this nice and tidy. And we're gonna pass in what we want to place them bricks under. So this just keeps it open to if you had several collections of bricks or different types of bricks, we're just gonna say generate bricks, passing in that group, and then inside of this method, we can use some uh, tricks to go ahead and generate these out. Now I like to do this so it can be easily customized. So inside of here, I'm gonna create a rows variable, and I'm gonna create a columns variable 
to denote how many, of course, rows we want and how many columns we want. What we're then gonna do is we're gonna choose an X offset for each of the bricks, so how far apart they should be, and also a Y offset for the bricks to say how far apart they should be. So I've just chosen 50 and 45 randomly, but of course you can adjust this if you want to. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through each of the rows iterate through each of the columns and for each of them iterations we're going to generate a brick and then we're going to add it to that bricks group and then finally that entire group we can position where we need to on the screen so the first thing that we want to do is create a for loop in here let's go ahead and initialize a y variable to uh, zero and then we're going to say while y is less than the amount of rows we have we're going to increment y so as long as you know a basic for loop then this should make complete sense now because we're doing rows and columns we need another for loop inside of here because of course we need to generate across and downwards so we create another for each loop for each loop inside of here or for loop sorry inside of here and we let x equals uh, equals zero and of course you can change these variable names around and instead we compare this to the amount of columns so we only want to generate this uh, while it is less than the amount of columns that we need now what we can do inside of here is new up a brick which is that prefab that we created over here before we do that we need to go ahead and import this so let's import brick from going back a directory into prefabs and pulling in brick let's go down and what we can do like i said over in that prefab we can pass in the game which of course we have a reference to inside of our main game the x and y position so now that we've created this new brick let's pull this down this is the reference to the game now we need the x and y offset all we do is we multiply x which is the inside loop just here by the x offset that's going to go ahead and position them uh, spaced apart by 50 and we do the same for y as well so y times the y offset so hopefully that makes sense but you can fiddle around with these if uh, this gets a little bit too tricky now inside of the inner for loop we want to use that bricks group that we're passing through which we haven't actually done at the moment so this is going to be the bricks group remember that we're passing that group into we want to go ahead and use that bricks group to add the brick that we've just created which of course is going to have a different x and y position for each of them okay so now that we've done this let's just come down here and let's log out the bricks group so just before we go ahead and preview this just to make sure we don't have any errors let's define out the brick here which is of course going to be overwritten for every single brick that's defined and if we come over notice that you have the following and of course we have that logged out as well and this is our phaser group with all of our bricks in so you can see that this is being placed on the screen but we need to position this in the very center just underneath lives at a offset of our choice from the top and of course this needs to be perfectly centered so that's the tricky part how do we go ahead and do this let's go ahead and get rid of the console log here and let's go ahead and create a brick group width variable now we need to work out the entire width of the brick set now this is going to be the x offset that we've defined at the top just up here and that is the space between each of the bricks multiplied by the amount of columns we have and then we're going to subtract the x offset minus the brick width like so so all that's doing if we divide that by two is giving us the position that this should be in the center and you can go ahead and do some console logging on this to see how this works now what we can do is say bricks group position and we can use the set to method to go ahead and place this where we need to. So actually let's first of all go ahead and log out the brick group width just so we can see this. And let's comment this out. So you can see that we get 366. Now this is the width of our brick group. From that, based on the width of the world, what we can do is work out where this should be positioned. So this is the width of the brick group. Now we want to say this game world center x minus the brick group width and then for the y axis axis it doesn't really matter we can just say this game world and center y minus 250 and that's going to be 250 pixels from the top so if we give that a refresh now you can see that that is working we determine the width of the brick group from the world size we placed it in the center and then this is 250 pixels from the top which of course you can adjust if you want to now if i uh, 
open this up so the uh, canvas area is going to be larger and I give that a refresh notice that it still works it's not going to uh, react to the browser size changing it's just going to cut this off because we have a kind of static canvas element but what it will do is when the game first enters regardless of the size of the screen it's going to position these in the center so that's pretty much our bricks set up and our brick group again this stuff can get a little bit confusing but if you're a mathematician if you're good at maths then you know you'll understand this straight away i'm unfortunately not so it took me a little bit of time to get this working but that is pretty much how we go ahead and iterate through generate our rows and columns for our bricks and go ahead and position them in the center of our world. And of course you can customize this now. So if you wanted 10 columns, that's gonna work and it's still gonna position them in the center because we've determined this based on how many columns we have. And for rows as well, of course, you could bump this up and have more rows if you wanted to. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can move on to adding the paddle at the bottom.